Okay, students, so um, we only need to have one lesson just looking at the reigns of, first of all, Harold Harefoot um, and then his half-brother, Harthur Canute. Um, we only need one lesson on both those men. Um, it's not because um, simply that Harold Harefoot ruled only from 1035 to 1040. And as you'll see in a moment, the fact that Harthur Canute actually went on to rule for only two more years after that. Um, it's not that fact particularly, just the fact that um, they reigned for such a short period of time. Um, but it really isn't um, completely essential when we're doing the examination because it's very rare we get explicit questions about um, their reigns individually. In fact, that's never happened. So what we'll do is, is we'll do some short notes about the reign of Harold Harefoot, um, pose a question to you there. We'll do the same thing with Harthur Canute. So we'll work on this one sheet with Harold Harefoot. So try and keep up with just drawing the spider diagrams out as you go, um, get to the focus question, and then we answer the question from there. Okay, so the first issue that we have um, with the reign of Harold Harefoot is that um, it is perceived initially um, as a period of time where there is um, a greater degree of instability than there certainly had been um, during the reign of Canute previously. Now, that instability comes about because technically um, Harold Harefoot shouldn't have actually inherited um, the English throne. Um, Harold Harefoot, if we remember first of all, um, was the product of the first marriage that we learnt last lesson between Canute and El Gifu. Now, when you're actually looking at that then, it was actually the case that everyone expected that Harthur Canute would take over, who was the son of the product of the marriage, um, if we recall, of Canute and Emma of Normandy. So it turned into a period of instability. Now, the reason that Harold Harefoot actually then um, was in charge in England during this period of time is that Harthur Canute himself was actually busy um, trying to keep control of Denmark. So if Harthur Canute could have come to England to um, take the throne there, he would have, but he himself was going through a period of time where he had to remain in Denmark. So the reason that it's a period of instability is that initially um, the chronicles only ever describe Harold Harefoot as what we call a regent. Okay, so we'll put that word down. So a regent is a word that defines someone who runs a kingdom in the absence of someone else. So actually, for the first two years of his reign, he was not actually perceived as the king of the English. Now, there is other evidence to support that. For example, the Archbishop of Canterbury at the time um, actually initially refused to crown him. So there was no coronation in the first two years. So we'll put that down, refused to crown him. So that's our first piece of evidence about instability. Now, the other piece of evidence about instability is the fact that whilst Harefoot would have liked to have ruled the whole of England, he actually found that he had two fairly formidable opponents in England itself and we'll add those in uh, on the next arrow. Okay, so the second thing to add to the spider diagram then is this idea of two people, two powerful people, that provided opposition to Harefoot in that initial period of time. Now, um, the Whiten Age Moot which is the meeting of the wise old men, so a council of elders, actually, first of all, accepted Harefoot as king. Apart from perhaps not just one person, but one significant person. Now, the person that actually opposed him in that initial period was Earl Godwine. So he's our first opponent. So Earl Godwine actually then allied with the second person who would oppose Harefoot taking over completely. And that, if you think about it, and it makes some sense, 
was Emma. Um, Emma and Earl Godwine, what they did is, is that they actually ran most of the south of the kingdom in the name of Harthur Canute. So what they were doing is, is that they were running the south of the England in the name of Harthur Canute, um, putting forward the idea that when Canute felt fit, um, he himself would actually come back into England and take the whole of the country. So uh, two opponents, just remember, Earl Godwine, who opposed him at the meeting of the White and Age Moot originally, although many of the other Saxon nobility accepted him, and Emma obviously would oppose because she had married Canute um, after that time, and it was her son, Harthur Canute, who she perceived to be as the rightful heir. Now, the third point to make is it is the events of 1036 which actually start to resolve the problem of the instability and the opposition that Harefoot was actually facing. So this is a very important part of the course because it appears throughout and it's so important because it sows the seeds of the great hatred between the man who becomes Edward the Confessor and the Godwine family. So we'll take you through that as slowly as we can, just so it's absolutely clear. Now, um, the problems uh, in Denmark were carrying on for some time. And at some point, um, it was interesting where Emma herself may have started to actually favour uh, her two sons who had been in exile as possibly um, claimants for the throne themselves over Hartha Canu. So from the last lesson, what we know is, is that it was very possible that Emma actually sent a letter um, inviting those two sons to return. Now that letter was obviously sent to, you had Alfred and you had Edward, who had been in exile in Normandy um, since the time that Canute had taken the throne. Now, as mentioned before, what we do know is that um, Emma spent much time after these events trying to say that the letter itself was perhaps a forgery created by Harefoot. Um, I think she, what she was attempting to do was remove herself from any of the blame because, of course, eventually it leads to the dreadful uh, murder of her son, Alfred. But regardless, anyway, uh, most historians would agree that she did send a letter um, inviting them to England. Now, at that point, um, what we have to understand is that they would have arrived with some military force as they sail from Normandy. And what we do know is that Alfred was actually received, first of all, um, with some courtesy by Earl Godwine. So very important we put that down. So Alfred was received with some courtesy by Earl Godwine. Now, what we have to imagine at this point is that Earl Godwine, showing all the skills of a Godwine, um, was probably um, thinking carefully about who he wished to support. Um, would he support Alfred? Would he support Harold Harefoot? Now, he has no particular um, point of allegiance. He's only self-interested. Now, this is the moment then in the reign of Harefoot where things move on quite quickly because what Earl Godwine did is he must have made the decision at that point that he would actually side with Harold Harefoot. So what happened? Well, one of the most infamous moments in the course. So what Earl Godwine did is he actually delivered uh, Alfred to Harefoot's men. Now, when he'd been delivered to Harefoot's men, uh, most students quite rightly say, well, uh, where was Edward at this point? Um, 
what we believe is, is that when Edward arrived in the kingdom with Alfred, we think that possibly Edward showed a little better judgment of what the situation looked like in England and decided that it was rather too dangerous and headed back to Normandy. So at this point, um, his brother unfortunately appears a little more naive. Um, he's handed over to Harefoot's men. Um, they placed him on a ship. He was going to be taken to a place, uh, supposedly to meet Harold Harefoot, a place called Ely in Cambridgeshire. But on the ship on the way, uh, Harefoot's men blinded him. Now, the actual action of blinding um, someone who is a potential claimant to the throne is to prevent them from then having a claim. Um, it isn't, in fact, supposed to kill them. However, um, the wounds must have been fairly appalling because that's exactly what happened. So Alfred was killed um, by Harold Harefoot's men in 1036. And by this time, uh, Godwin has clearly given his allegiance to Harefoot. And finally, just to discuss the death of Harold Harefoot. Now, we can consider that from 1037 onwards, although Harold Harefoot had had a relatively unstable reign, um, certainly there was more stability in England from that point onwards. However, that stability could never be complete because there was always the threat that Harthur Canute would uh, come to England. He would take back what he always felt had been rightfully his um, and potentially there could have been civil war. Now, um, that was actually averted because Harold Harefoot uh, fell unwell um, in about 1039. Now, in 1039, Harthur Canute had actually prepared an invasion force um, he was actually, uh, by that time, more secure in Denmark. So 1039, Harthur Knut prepared an invasion force. Um, but this was actually never needed. Um, what he did is, is he sailed um, to where now there's modern day Belgium um, because Emma had gone into exile. Um, from 1037 probably onwards um, and he um, obviously met with his mother there heard the news that his half-brother was unwell um, and he simply let nature take its course so um, Harold Harefoot actually dies in 1040 okay so Harefoot died in 1040 um, in true, if you like, uh, medieval fashion, uh, when Harefoot actually died, um, his half-brother rather lovingly um, uh, uh, dug up his body, had it exhumed, um, probably removed the head and flung the pieces into a ditch, um, which kind of proves um, really how it had been a fairly unstable period of time compared to the reign of Canute. OK, so traditional focus question for us whilst we're working at home at the moment. One paragraph necessary. OK, so why is the period, and we'll use the dates that Harefoot ruled, 1035 to 1040, seen as a period of, and we'll use that key term, that we started with as a period of instability. Uh, points to focus on. Clearly the instability to the extent that Harefoot was never expected to be king and certainly within the first two years we could say there are reasons why um, he was not perceived as such through opposition. Um, you could reasonably say that the events of 1036 did create a turning point when he'd removed one of his potential rivals. Godwine had now sided with him, but it was clearly a period of instability and we can compare and contrast that um, to the reign of Canute.